Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials, as well as give a lot of baking business tips. And as per usual, I will give my proposed pricing for this cake at the end of the video, so be sure to watch it all the way through. So right now what I'm doing is I'm starting off by just covering this cake board. All I had were these cheapy Wilton cake boards. They're actually made to go in between your cake layers. That's why there's that center dowel spot, but this was all I had, so I went with it. That being said, the edges are not that nice, and the top isn't that nice either, so that's why I'm covering it with some fondant. And to do that, I just put a little bit of Crisco on there, or you can use any shortening that you like, and then place the fondant on there, and then go ahead and cut it out. Super, super easy peasy. I know some of that cardboard texturing is showing through. I'm fine with that for this particular cake, but if you're not, you could definitely retexture it, or you can make your fondant thicker so it doesn't show through. As the cakes were baking, I decided to make this fondant panda, and I will often do this when I'm low on time. Work on your fondant work if if you can while that is in the oven. Now I do end up using some tools on this, but it's not necessary. If you don't have a lot of cake tools, you can honestly do this with some toothpicks or whatever you have lying around. After creating the body and the head, what I'm doing is I'm making some black fondant, just using some fondust. And yes, from here on out, my finger nails are completely dyed black. It was very hard to get rid of it. However, Everything is all good. It didn't transfer onto the white, so that's all I care about. I'm also not caring about the fact that my panda is going to have a very flat back. This is going to go right up against the cake. If you want your panda to be sitting up, then I suggest that you use gum paste instead of fondant because it dries a lot more quickly. And you want that body to be fairly stiff so it doesn't start scrunching over, which is sometimes what happens with fondant. Now when making symmetrical details like this, the rule of thumb is that you just take one solid piece of fondant or gum paste, split it in half, and then create whatever it is that you're creating. So whether it's the glint in the eye, the eyeball itself, or the ears, always follow that rule of thumb and you'll end up with a fairly symmetrical animal. I'm also attaching all of the little pieces with just a little bit of water. You could use edible glue with this, but it's really not necessary. The fondant will stick with water. Gum paste as well. For this arm here, don't be afraid to kind of squish it down right into the belly. And then I'm adding on these details so he has cute little paws. You can get very creative with the arm position here, but I find if you're just starting out, this is probably the easiest position, and you can also use it for other animals too. Now I'm going to make the feet and legs a little bit differently. What I'm gonna do here instead is I made those legs shorter so that the feet could be sitting up like this. And to make these round little discs, I just take the fondant, squish it, and then shape it how I see fit. My camera was overheating, so unfortunately we missed most of the paws there, but really all I did was I took little round dots of fondant and squished them in to create that paw pattern. And then for the leaves here, it wasn't very thin at first, so I decided to thin it out even more. And I should also point out that I believe I was using a mix of fondant and gum paste for this. You can use either or, they're both going to work beautifully, and because it is so thin, the fondant will dry fairly quickly. I also ended up adding a slight bend into the leaves for a more realistic look. Now, I haven't gotten to use this. I actually bought it, I think, last year for Valentine's, but never used it, and then didn't use it again for this Valentine's Day, so I decided to use it for this cake. Now, what I should have done is put more cornstarch in there because some of my letters got a little stuck, but I didn't really have time to try it again, so I thought I should just go with it. And this is me trying to repair some of that damage that I created, just re-popping some of those letters back out. This cake was crumb coated and chilling in the fridge. Notice it really isn't that nice of a crumb coat. It's because I know I'm going to be putting on these egg rolls here. My dad absolutely loves egg rolls and this cake was for him. And this is actually what started the whole panda theme of the cake. I was thinking to myself, how can I add on egg rolls to the cake, but still make it look cool and make it look themed? And this is what I came up with. And I kind of snapped these egg rolls in half and made them varying sizes. It was a little tricky to do because they are quite delicate. I asked my son what this particular animal was called and he called it a bamboo bear, which I thought was just the cutest thing. But we take the little panda and we put some buttercream on the back. Now notice how I inserted that toothpick. The reason is we don't want too much pressure on the body of the panda. Now my panda is fairly dry, but if yours isn't, that toothpick combined with the buttercream backing should be enough so that it won't sink into itself. And that little medallion we created is also fairly dry. If you're in a hurry, use gum paste instead of fondant. And then it's attach it with a little bit of buttercream. I felt like the cake was a little bit undone looking at the top, especially because I had been so haphazard with the original crumb coat, so I decided to add on these rosettes, and I'm just using a 1M tip to create this. Start from the center and then work your way around. 
So I attached all the leaves and the different pieces of fondant that I created earlier onto the cake with a little bit of buttercream, but I decided it needed a little bit of edible grass, which I believe is just wafer paper that's been dyed green, but I bought mine pre-made. Now this part was super satisfying. I took a little bit of bronzy gold luster dust, mixed it with some vodka, but you can use lemon extract if you prefer instead. And then I placed it on to the sides of these egg rolls. And notice how quick and haphazard I'm being. The key here is to make sure that it doesn't look too perfect, but do keep your lines horizontal. I thought I was done here, but decided at the last minute to add a little bit of petal dust to the cheeks. And here we have our completed panda cake or bamboo beer cake. Now I gotta say guys, pricing cakes and desserts has been so tricky for me in the last couple months because of inflation. It's just so rapid and especially with the cost of ingredients, I really feel for those of you that are working out of your home or you own your own bakery and you're really having to up these costs at such an astronomical level. So I've done my best for price quoting this six inch cake, but keep in mind, we all live in different areas. So it's always a good idea to do local research. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe so you can be part of the Speedy fam. Right now I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye.